Jessie Draper, the Valley Girl. Valley Girl. What does your company do? Have you ever Googled yourself? Totally. What makes a great entrepreneur? What's your next big idea? Tweeting's like my favorite. Let's talk business. I'm like the Valley Girl. And girls just wanna have fun and be really great entrepreneurs. Let's talk business with Sharon Bosmick of Astia. Astia is a nonprofit global organization that helps propel women's full participation as entrepreneurs in high growth companies. Sharon Bosmick is the CEO of Astia and a rockin' woman. Well, welcome, Sharon. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Jesse. I am so excited to be here. I'm so excited you're here. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm fantastic, and I'm feeling very pink. Yeah. I must say this is fantastic. Yes, it is. It does make everyone look a little pinker when they're in the set. You know? I can feel it. <laughs> Tell me a little about Astia. What is Astia? Yeah. What do you guys do? Fundamentally, Astia is a community, which is never what people expect me to say. They expect me to say it's a nonprofit or it's an organization. It's a global community that is committed to the success of women-led companies. Yay! We like it. We like it. <laughs> it works well. So I love that it's female-focused. I think yeah. there aren't enough entrepreneurial communities for females. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely less females in the entrepreneur world. And I encourage more to get out there. Um, <laughs> for my viewers, I wanted them all to fully understand what you, you guys do at Astia. Great. Um, and so I have a little sort of demonstration that Great. I thought might help us a little bit. Um, so, let's call these our little startup eggs. Right. Okay. So what would you do with this startup egg? Well, the first thing you do is, I love that you have two eggs, because peer learning is really important for startups. And Astia is very committed to peer learning. Okay, so this is startup. You'll notice you said it's startup, which would mean on the inside of this would be a lot of folks, right? Not yes. just the one. This is the startup itself. Exactly. So it's made up of men and women, ideally, mm -hmm. because we know that innovation requires it. Some great research that innovation requires both, both men, men and women. And women. Exactly. I like it. And group intelligence mm -hmm. is directly cor correlated to the number of women on the team. So okay. more women, better. Yes. But not all women. <laughs> but not all women. Just thought I'd go with that thing. More for women a while. is better. I exactly. like that. <laughs> We're really about being that safe place to break a few eggs, lay a few more, <laughs> try a few other things, and hopefully get it right on the way. And I think some of our companies are great examples of that. Okay. So you might nurture the nest a little right. bit. We might right? talk about how do you own your financials? Really own them, right? Oh, how yeah. do you come up with a financial story that investors are gonna love yes. and write a check for? Yes. Then how are you gonna attract that killer advisor who's really gonna talk to you about go-to-market strategies to get okay. those customers? Because, you know, customers? Yes. Yeah, really important. And then we're gonna add a, a little bit of global perspective. So that Astia as a global community is equally important. You're not stuck in your little nest. You actually can expand your reach well beyond your little nest through our ecosystem. I love it. And then we're gonna stay with you all the way to when you fly away, IPO. Okay. Fly away, someone acquires you. Or fly away, you become the billion dollar company that's dominating the market and you know, and tell me about a few of your exits, because you guys have had some amazing exits. We have. So I want to highlight two of them, because I always love to highlight our entrepreneurs. Oh, uh, definitely. Shout outs to them. We had two that were really interesting. One was Scout Labs. Very cool technology, sold to Lithium Technologies. The founder is Jennifer Zezet. I love Jenny for many reasons. She actually typifies the successful entrepreneur. She has about 15 years experience, has a family, and has um, a really interesting idea and started a company. So she sold Scout Labs to Lithium last year. That's so and exciting. It was a great I can't journey for her. Oh, it was very exciting. Scout Labs it has this great technology that allows big brands to know sentiments about their brands out there in the market, okay. so out on the internet. What are people saying about them? Yeah. Cool technology. Very cool. Second one I'd highlight is a life science company. A DNA Direct is the company. Ryan Phelan is the entrepreneur, and she's similar to Jenny. Um, kind of breaks the stereotype of what an entrepreneur looks like. She's had a very successful career. She's a PhD. Okay. And she has um, sold DNA Direct to a publicly traded company called Medco. My and goodness. her company provides customized or personalized medical diagnostics. That's so great. You want to know your DNA makeup? Her uh, technology enables 
and this is where ASTI gets interesting. We're not just focused on what is your pitch. We're not a pitch competition. Yeah. We're what are all the core elements of your business that you may need to be thinking about, and how can we surround you with the right expertise at the right time? That's so great. It's really because it is hard to start a company, and a lot of people don't even know which way to look. And yeah. you guys, you know, help the entrepreneurs in so many ways. It's it's just and it's amazing how far you guys have come. Yeah, yeah. It's really incredible. I would say that our little big effort to absolutely change the numbers as it relates to women. Speaking of the numbers, you've raised over a billion dollars in mm. capital for women from VCs and. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, so the capital sources are venture capital, angel investment, uh, strategic investment, and government grants since 2003. So more even prior to that. And then but over 60% have had great exits. Uh, over 60% secure funding, secure funding or sorry, an sorry. exit within one year of joining Astia. Oh my goodness. Which is phenomenal. Well, so tell me a little bit about um, growing up because I understand you moved um, around. Yeah. So I'm an odd duck, I think, because uh, I am fundamentally a Midwesterner. Interestingly, I, my first years, my, my earliest years, were spent in Ethiopia. Um, my dad was a doctor. Yeah. Oh my goodness. My mom was a nurse. And they were doing some amazing work changing the world themselves. That uh, is great. Doing famine relief in you Ethiopia. You have a whole family of world changers. Where we lived in Ethiopia, uh, the children danced almost all the time, which was great. Oh my goodness. And uh, so I actually... I actually met my husband because he was supposed to go dancing with me. I'm very committed to dancing. Girls just want to have fun. I think girls, girls they want to have fun. How does it, wait, how does it start? They just really want. <laughs> Keep going, please. I can't remember the rest of the words. Yeah, but I think we need to be bopping around as we do. Yeah, exactly. I like it. <laughs> IBM just had their centennial celebration, and I was invited of, as one of 150 leaders from outside the company to wow. come in and talk about leadership. Oh, that's so great. And one of the things we learned was um, how to achieve group intelligence. Um, group intelligence is correlated to three things within the group. One is how well do they intuit the rest of the group can they okay. intuit from. Number two is how do they conduct themselves during disagreement? Do they dialogue or do they argue? And number three is how many women, I'm, and I mentioned that. I think women really have a great intuitive nature just in general. That's what they said at this IBM thing. They, they said that they actually thought that the point about the group needing to intuit each other and the number of women were actually one and the same issue. Interesting. Um, that both were achieved because of how women listen and, and dialogue. I like that. What do we have to look forward to from Astia? Mm, big things. Big, big things. things. Yeah. Big things. Big things. So our goal is that by 2020, we are out of business. <gasps> We're going to mainstream the conversation. And what the conversation is, is that women Wait, are you're ready. you're going to end the business? Our job is you're to You're planning your exit We're right now? We're planning our exit. But not just any exit. And it, what it really is, is that we see a day when that 10% number, whatever the number is that goes in investment that goes into women in high growth spaces, will be a more appropriate representation of women's abilities. And where women will be half of the high growth entrepreneurs because we are half of the talent pool at the ready. And so when Astia will have been such a mainstream topic, that we'll get to go on to move other issues or change the market in some other way. And that's why I'm, what I mean by that's really, that's really great. So it's kind of like a goal it more is. than an exit. It is. Okay. And we've declared this is the decade of the woman entrepreneur. High five. I love it. And we've worked tirelessly for the last year and a half to really move forward on our one, year one and year two goals. And uh, it's the first time I've ever seen organizations from such diverse backgrounds as policymakers, entrepreneurs, investors, um, industry leaders all aligning to one set of core goals. And the core goals are fourfold and they're very simple. Increase the number of women entrepreneurs in the high growth space, sorry, because we're, we're doing just fine in high small growth. business mm -hmm. and, and micro enterprise, but increase the number of women. Increase their success, so that's really the milestone Woo! beyond the funding, exactly. Increase the number of women investors, okay. because what we know is where there are more women in partnerships, in decision making bodies within the venture firms, there's a strong correlation to women in the portfolio. And then the fourth one is increase the number of women on boards. I love that. I do too.
there aren't a zillion, you know, female investors. There aren't a zillion, you know, female entrepreneurs, and there's there should be. There should be, and there should be more noise about the ones that exist. Yeah. You know, I'm always asking people, do you know Diane Green? Uh, do you know the name Diane no. Green? No. Okay, so you have to interview Diane Green on your show. Okay. That's my challenge to you. Okay. Diane Green was the founder of VMware, which was the largest IPO in 2007, which what? was arguably the most innovative technology since the internet, virtual machines, which allow us to do all the co cloud computing that we do, and that and was Diane Green. she started that company. She did, and she took it from start to IPO and built its revenues crazy, beat the street the whole way to the exit and beyond the exit, and no one knows her name. Well, Diane Green, I need to get you on my pink show. We'll get you there. <laughs> High five. <laughs> I'm in. And if you'd like, you would you can yeah, I'm you're in. rewarded with one of these, so we should probably Only one? these. Well, there's a whole tray. There's a whole tray. <laughs> I guess I can share the rest of it. <laughs> I suppose. I'm like the Valley Girl. And I'm like Sharon Voss McAvasia. These are delicious. Fantastic. And now it's time for your dits moment. Oh, and you you guys were recently, you recently spoke at, Hillary Clinton chose you to speak. Yeah. Oh.